for more on all this, let's bring in Karen Holt. She's a prof political science professor at Virginia Tech University and an advisory board member for the White House Transition Project. We should note a nonpartisan board there. Uh, Karen, thanks so much for joining us. This was obviously always going to be a different inauguration, but probably much more now that anyone could have imagined. Talk about some of the unique logistical challenges involved. Well, as your correspondent was pointing out, among the logistical challenges are certainly the pandemic, but in addition, serious, ser serious security concerns, especially given what happened last week in the assault on the Capitol building itself. So that's meant a variety of kinds of changes. That means, for example, though President-elect Biden and Vice President-elect Harris will be sworn in outside in front of the west end of the, of the Capitol building itself, at the same time, the National Mall will be closed to all attendees in past inaugurations. People from across the nation and the world could gather to see a president inaugurated in person. That won't be possible this year. Moreover, those who are invited to witness the inauguration will be limited in number. Each member of Congress, for example, can only bring one guest with them if they choose to go to the inaugural ceremony. And with that, what's also unusual about this particular inauguration is that for the first time since 1869, the outgoing president, President Trump, will not be in attendance. So all kinds of differences. Transition business, of course, is continuing. What sort of things, important things, are happening that are perhaps getting overshadowed by the issues you just mentioned? Well, as in any presidential transition, especially when a new president is coming into office, there are a range of things that have to be done. They have to determine what has been going on in the past administration, see what various executive branch agencies are up to, what their programs are, what remaining problems are, and at the same time, the new administration has to replace almost 4,000 people in the federal government. And that ranges from so-called cabinet nominees who have to be confirmed by the U.S. Senate, but they have to as well put together a White House staff and do a whole range of other changes to make sure that on January 20th, the new president can start as much business as quickly as they can and as fast as they can. You teach political science. What are you telling your students, these impressionable 20-something-year-olds, about what's happening right now in America? Well, I'm, I'm talking, but I'm also listening. But among the things we're talking about is the, what this means in the historical sweep of things in U.S. history. And, and as you've pointed out, there have been many things that have been unprecedented in this past presidential administration and moving to the new Biden administration. We're also needing to talk a lot about what it means to be involved in civil deliberation and whether all disagreements must turn into violence or something else. So many, many things to talk about, especially in the U.S. context, what that means in terms of casting the United States as a representative democracy. Professor Karen Holt, thank you so much for joining us. Happy to be here. Thank you.